good day to you, everyone. I hope you're having an enjoyable day wherever you're at as you're watching this video. So I was in Capitol Reef National Park last week, September of 2021, and I just found myself looking around for something to paint and happened upon these two trees that I've actually painted before. These are two very large cottonwood trees centered in the historic community of Fruta in the heart of Capitol Reef National Park. Very big, very beautiful trees. Just to give you a sense of size and scale, honestly, those trunks, I couldn't get my arms maybe, oh gracious, maybe a sixth of the way around. They're huge trunks. They're about 150 years old. They were probably little saplings when the original settlers in the 1800s came to the area and tried to make a living here. And those trees have been here ever since and doing well, finding a source of groundwater. And there in the middle of the desert on that uh, canyon floor in the middle of Capitol Reef National Park, they're flourishing just great. So as I'm approaching this piece here, I'm doing it a little bit differently. I kind of started drawing the tree first or painting the tree first and then I will, will work the rest of the surrounding terrain around it. So the sky I'm saving until later. The background elements uh, such as the distant hill I'm saving all those until later. Even that middle and foreground area of grass in this little park. Saving till later. I'm attacking those, those trees first. It's those trees that are first and foremost. They're front and center for me and so I'm just focused on them. And It's a little out of character for my traditional approach to watercolor painting. But one has to remember that this is a rule of thumb. It's not an absolute irrefutable law. These are just my guidelines that I use once in a while and sometimes with good reason I break them. In recent weeks here in my studio I've been working more and more with oil paint once again and still have been doing plein air work with watercolor. And it's kind of interesting just to notice and pay attention to the differences between the two mediums. Here I'm working very transparently. I have to work from light to dark. Oil paint allows you to work from dark to light. You can go right over the top opaquely, make corrections or paint lighter against the dark in order to create the kind of contrasts that you need for the work of art to work. Here you're working from light to dark so one has to preserve the white of the paper and that always presents a little bit of a challenge when it comes to drawing with watercolor and that's a point I'd like to make here, remake, I've made it several times actually but as I'm working here each time I'm painting in this manner I am drawing so just trying to establish that drawing as carefully as I can working interchangeably between positive and negative space. I paint one form it tells me where the other form is going to lie in the space that I'm creating here. A note about this particular palette that I'm using. It only has cadmium yellow light, quinacridone red, and thalo blue in it. And so with those three colors I'm mixing all the colors that you are seeing. One thing I'm noticing about the way that I'm using the color here is perhaps I'm not mixing enough yellow and red with the blue. Consequently the overall painting feels a little cool temperature wise, color temperature wise, especially when I take a look at the photograph that I took of the scene. 
But in the end, what's more important than anything else is the value structure that the artist gives to a painting. As you're able to make darks dark enough and lights light enough, it almost doesn't matter what color you put in. If your values are correct, color choices are really secondary to getting good values in there. You are watching me change things up with brushes off and on. Just kind of go with the flow of the moment. And for a while I was using that uh, low Cornell round ferruled brush that you see there now. And then I switched to a three quarter inch flat ferruled brush. It just allows me to make marks that the round ferruled brush cannot make. And then I'm coming in with a rather small I think it's a size 2 uh, soft bristled brush, just adding in, adding in some textures and some dark passages to help those trees to stand out. Well, okay. I'll play a little music for you here. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you on the other side. Considering the spectacular starry nights down there, as we stayed at the campground in Torrey, it was uh, just an impressive sight. I thought that music might be appropriate to play. We're coming now down to the end. I've signed it, and I'm putting in some human figures, putting in a little human interest. I normally don't do that, but somehow, with this painting being somewhat out of the ordinary for me, I decided I would go ahead and do that couple of picnic tables with people seated at them. All right, that's it for me. I hope you have enjoyed watching this painting come together.